What's going on, brothers and sisters in Christ? I'm Colton from Seeking Wisdom Ministries, and may the joy of the Lord be our strength in these final moments before the Lord's return. So today, the Lord, uh, in my prayer time, and as I'm honestly looking on YouTube and just scrolling, and I'm seeing some heartfelt videos of Indian villages and people, uh, man, they have it hard of just the water pollution and all these sort of things. But uh, the Lord was speaking to me and had me pray even for these people and that they will find God truly, find Jesus Christ, and that messengers will be sent out there into the villages because we know that every nation will hear the gospel before Christ returns. And I mean, we're, we're, we're looking like it's really at the cusp. We're, we're, we're seeing that it's really, really close. I mean, if you haven't heard of Jesus at least once in your life, you have to be living under a rock. Because God is being revealed in these final moments. God's true identity is being spread. Uh, but the Lord placed on my head, pray for these people that they have mercy, uh, that they that pray for mercy over them, that, that you know, messengers may be sent, but don't blame me. And it had me realizing, and I was, I was, I was communicating and having you know, the Father in me just pour on me how many people blame God for their circumstances. How many people are truly blaming the creator for what the mess that they're in? See, we can have mercy and, and think, oh, wow, man, those people are going through some hard times, which they are, which we need to pray for them. But the reality is the false gods, God will give you over to your reprobate mind to go serve another God. If you don't want to worship God in spirit and in truth, God will give you over. So we're going to look at the word of God today and we're going to be fed off of his word and I'm going to be speaking from the word of God today. So if you're hungry and you thirst after righteousness, God's promise is and still is that he will fill you. So I'm going to pray before we get into the word of God, but this is going to be on do not blame God in these last two days. Do not blame God at all for any circumstance that you're in. And we're going to go off of scripture right here today. So Lord, I decrease as you increased. I lift up the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth as you draw people unto you by your Holy Spirit, God. In these last days before your return, I pray an outpouring of your Holy Spirit upon those listening to this word right now, God, that you will fill them with knowledge and revelation and wisdom beyond their years, beyond their understanding, because God, we need to know your word. We need to know as people of God to discern your voice from the enemy's voice in these last days so that we're not tossed to and fro, double-minded people, God, but that we can know who you are and know who we are in you and that you are Christ in us, the hope of glory. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So let's look at the word right here in James. Uh, this is the scripture that the Lord wants me to read. I'm gonna mostly read from 1 Peter 1 through 1, but let us, let, let's look at what the Lord says about God tempting you. I'm going to have KJV and NLT parallel right here so, you know, each one of you can look at, you know, each one. I, I like to read from the KJV, but sometimes the NLT, just to go back and forth sometimes. But I'm going to read from the NLT for people who are maybe younger and have a little bit harder time understanding these words. There's no excuse if you don't know something. Look it up in the dictionary. Ask God. Uh, he'll share with you. But there's no problem uh, right in this moment to be able to make it a little bit more simple for those uh, to understand a little deeper. And remember, when you are being tempted, do not say, God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong. He never tempts anyone else. So when you're going through a hard decision, don't blame God and say, God, why, why, why are you allowing this to happen? Like, why are you allowing this woman who, who I, I, was my ex to come into my life and now she's seducing me? Why are you allowing this? God never tempts to do evil in your life. If you're being seduced, it's because your own evil desires and your own flesh. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away from God, from the will of God, from communion, from abiding in, in him, right? These desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to deaths, death. See, the wages of sin is death. When we sin, death is on the, on the other side or about to come and about to haunt you, about to come up into your life. So don't be misled, my dear brothers and sisters. Uh, so yeah, do not err, my beloved brother. Now we're going to go to 1 Peter 1. And this is, this is the big stuff, guys. Uh, Jesus Christ is coming so soon, but there is so much deception in these last days where people think that it's God's fault because they're in a circumstance that they never thought they would be in. But really, let's humble ourselves because 
We need to be humble. Jesus Christ is humble, meek, and lowly. Let's learn from him. Because when we have pride, if there's any, any, any ounce of pride in you, God will resist you until you deal with that and humble yourself. A lot of people say, God, humble me. I need to become more humble. But in reality, you need to humble yourself before the Lord. You don't want God to humble you. It's going to be a big disaster, a big destruction in your life as God humbled Pharaoh. That was awful for Pharaoh. But God's will got accomplished and God was glorified. So let's humble ourselves before the Lord so the Lord can show us what he wants to do with us. Because we all want to be used by God if you're in Christ and you're, you have some sort of degree of love for him. But what if the Lord is wanting to use you and grow you and put you through these trials which will grow you? See, there's a temptation from the devil. The devil wants to tempt you to do evil. God wants to tempt you to do righteousness. To see if you're going to obey the voice of the Lord or if you're going to obey your own flesh and your own desires. See, he's coming for a bride. The Lord Jesus Christ wants to marry his people in intimate relationship with his creation. So let's look in the word of God in 1 Peter for, uh, 1 right now. This letter is from Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. I'm writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners in uh, provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. God the Father knew you and chose you long ago. And his spirit has made you holy. As a result, you have obeyed him and have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more grace and peace. So just in verse 2, guys, we see a lot of key notes that a lot of people may pass over. God the Father knew you and chose you long ago. In eternities past, he already had your name and your face in his mind. As a result. Okay, he made you holy. So what's the result of salvation? A lot of people think that I, I preach a false gospel because I'm telling people to obey Jesus Christ. Which almost like I, I go, to the, go to the Lord because I really want to remain humble. And like if I'm preaching anything that is false, I have to go to the Lord and ask him. But I, I went to the Lord and I'm like, God, am I preaching wrong because I tell people to obey you, the creator of everything? And he, he, he whispered in my heart because God's voice is very low and still and, and just quiet. He told me. Hear what you're asking me, my son. And I'm like, oh. <laughs> and I thought about it. I'm questioning if I should tell my brothers and sisters to obey Jesus Christ. Why wouldn't you obey God? Why wouldn't you teach others to go obey the commandments in the word of God? Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't I go tell people? It's not where we put our faith in obedience. It's not where we put our faith in, 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 in works. We put our faith and we put our trust in Jesus Christ. In his spirit, in love, and we obey him as a result. Just as the word of God says right here. Through sanctification of the spirit unto obedience. In sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. So let's go down. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again. Because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. See, the devil wants to trap you with, and, and leave you hopeless. Thinking that you're never going to expect to ever get to heaven one day. Because the devil wants to condemn you. But God wants to convict you of sin, righteousness, and judgment. And then you grow up in God. God loves you. Don't ever, don't ever let the devil lie to you and say that God doesn't love me because I'm going through so much trials and tribulations. Snap out of that demonic thoughts. God wants to grow you and purify you. But you need to allow and yield to the Holy Ghost in your life so that God can use you as an instrument of righteousness. And we have a priceless inheritance. One more time, because I'm excited for this. We have a priceless inheritance. An inheritance that is incorruptible, that will never end. Inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power until you receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So, so, so let's understand this. A lot of people uh, like to go, once saved, always saved. But do we understand that the word of God, are, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed? We're not in our salvation yet. And people think, oh, I'm preaching a false gospel because I say we're not saved yet or we're not in our salvation yet. But saved itself, what are you saved from? Are you saved from hell? Are you saved from sin? What are you saved from? God came to give life and life abundantly, but are you saved from the sin in your life that you're still struggled and bound to and chained to in darkness? 
Are you saved by the light of the world who came in flesh and wrapped himself in flesh, the God of this cre- the world? And are you saved from the penalty or just the power? Mm. That's something to ask yourself and go pray in the prayer closet and ask the Lord. And through your faith, yes, so truly be glad there is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. So God is saying, you're going to endure many trials. You're going to endure. But guys, this isn't our real life. This is our temporary abode. This is our temporary abiding place to be. We're sojourners. We're walking through this life, this earth, and many trials and tribulations are smacking us. Do you know how many trials and tribulations I've been just in this past week with my new wife that I'm in? Man, the enemy has been attacking marriage, our marriage. And I've been going through it. I mean, I, I'm, no, I'm no exception. I mean, if Job, who walked with God and was righteous, was tempted and allowed, okay, the devil cannot tempt you unless he goes to the courtroom of heaven and asks of God, may I tempt them? May I go and do this? May I test them? God allows. How much more for Job who was righteous in all the things and then God allowed him to get destroyed in the sense of all of his family, all of his flock. He was a very wealthy man. All of his children died. His wife at the end was like, curse God and die. (laughs) And Job still did not do that. Then the devil had to go back into the courts of heaven and say, God, can I... You, he's only still being faithful to you because you have not let me touch him. So God said, okay, go touch him, but do not kill him. So he touched his health and he got sores and wounds and just, he was so broken. And at the end of the day, God restored everything and he was righteous in God's sight. So who are you? Who are you mere man to say that God is bad or God is evil because you're being tempted and tried for your faith? That's something you don't want to get into. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fires tests and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. (sighs) Jesus Christ is going to be revealed to the whole world on one day, and will you be found your faith? Will you be found with faith? Will you be found with clothed in the blood of the Lamb? Will you be found in faith in Jesus Christ? (laughs) Is your faith genuine? Obviously, there needs to be a genuineness to your faith. You can't just profess a vain faith. There's many people that are going to go and be like, Lord, Lord, I cast out demons in your name. God, I prophesied in your name. God, I did all these works. I went to church. I was sitting on the church congregation and I was going and raising up my hands going, praise God. Praise God, but in my heart, in their heart, they were far from God. They professed him with their lips by the, by the works they denied him. The only God, the only Savior, Jesus Christ. You love him even though you have never seen him. Many people here love Jesus Christ, though you haven't saw him one time in the physical. You may have had an encounter, praise the Lord, I had one too, but you never saw him yet. Though you do not see him now, you trust in him and you rejoice with glorious and expressible joy. Your reward, the reward for you trusting him will be the salvation of your soul. The reward of you trusting in Christ daily, not just on a prayer that you said a long time ago and you kick back your feet and you continue to live a life as a devil in sin. No transformation, no holiness, no genuinosity of your faith. And man, genuinosity, I don't don't know if that's even a word, but you know what? The Holy Ghost is moving. I'm not going to quench him. The salvation of your souls is the reward in you trusting God. This salvation was something even the prophets of old wanted to know more about when they prophesied about this gracious salvation prepared for you. You are blessed and highly favored. Before this time of grace, the prophets were the only ones who had the Holy Spirit and were truly, truly walking with God. And they were all killed by the religious Pharisees and the religious people. They all killed them. The so-called children of Abraham, right? Right? They wondered what time or situation of the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about when he told them in advance about Christ's sufferings and his great glory afterward. They were told that their messages were not up for themselves, but for you, for you, body of Christ, for you, bride, for you, children of the Most High King, servants of Christ Jesus. It's for you. It wasn't for them. The selflessness that they had, they wanted to know more about this gracious gift of what? The Holy Spirit. Through Christ Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection. It's a gift. But God gives his Holy Spirit to those who obey him. It's not, some people go, oh, well, it's a gift, so I don't have to work for it. Yeah, you don't have to work for it. You never earned it. You can never earn it. You can never do enough prayering and do enough works, do enough things to earn this gift. It is a gift. But did you receive the gift in humility? Because if you received it in pride saying, I pride myself in a prayer, God will resist you. 
but he gives grace to the humble, to those who acknowledge, oh, Lord, I'm so unworthy. I'm so unworthy. I'm a wretched, undone human being. As Isaiah was before the Lord, he said, I'm a man of unclean lips, and I'm with a people of unclean lips. Lord, but an angel of the Lord, a seraphim, took a, a tongs and took a hot coal, a live coal that was so hot, he, an angel had to use tongs and burned it on the mouth of Isaiah. The prophet of the Lord who was righteous. He was undone. A man undone. But the Lord cleansed him by the fire. Our God is a consuming fire, guys. And now this good self news has been announced to you by those who preached in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. It is all so wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen. Do you know you have angels around you and there's a great cloud of witnesses watching your salvation and your faith being tested? Every time you go into manifold temptations, the Lord and many great cloud of witnesses of people are looking upon you going, Are they going to worship God even though they're going through this pain, this divorce, this, 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 this awful relationship problems? The pain of death of a loved one. Are they still going to worship God? Are they still, even though their health is destroyed, even though they, their sons and daughters have left the faith, are they still going to worship the Lord Almighty God? Are they going to fall into hopelessness? So prepare your minds and exercise self-control. Put your hope in the gracious salvation that will come to you when Jesus Christ is revealed to the world. So you must live as God's obedient children. Don't slip back into your old ways of living to satisfy your own desires. You didn't know any better then. But now you must be holy in everything you do, just as God chose you is holy. For the scriptures say you must be holy because I am holy. And remember that the heavenly father to whom you pray has no favorites. He will judge or reward you according to what you do. So you must live in reverent fear of him during your time here as a temporary resident, sojourning here in fear. For you know that God paid the ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver, which lose their value. It was paid with the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless Lamb of God. God chose you as a ransom long before the world began to now in these last days he has been revealed to your sake. Through Christ you have come in trust in God and you have placed your faith and hope in God because, you have Christ, raised, because he raised Christ from the dead and gave him great glory. You were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. Sorry? What was that? We were cleansed from our faith when we obeyed. Sorry, we were not, not faith. You were cleansed from your sins when you obeyed the truth. But, but I thought faith, but I thought it was faith and no works. Guys, it's going to take a little bit of work to show that God's faith and that your faith in God is truly genuine. This once saved, always saved, say a prayer is a demonic doctrine from hell that is leading millions to hellfire. So now you must show sincere love to each other and as brothers and sisters love each other deeply with all your heart. For you have been born again, but not a life that will quickly end. Your, life, your new life will last forever because it comes from an eternal living word of God. As the scriptures say, people are like grass. Their beauty is the flower in the field and the grass withers and the flower fades. But the word of the Lord remains forever and that word is the good news that was preached to you. So guys, I come to you humbly as a servant of the Most High King. Obey the word of God. Obey Jesus Christ. Don't blame God for what you're in because it could be a temptation from the devil or it could be a test from the Lord to do righteousness. God tests righteousness. The, the devil tests disobedience. He tests to lure you into sin. The Lord is faithful. The Lord is coming soon. But guys, we really need to get into the word. We need our, to get our face in the book of God. Not our face into Facebook. The Lord is good. The Lord is faithful. I pray in Jesus' name that, Lord, you touch those who sincerely have kept and watched this whole video to the end. God, you're, you will reward them for their faithfulness. You will reward them with your presence and your love and your sincerity. You love us, God. You're not willing one should perish and go to hell forever. You're willing not one. That's your will. That's what you want. But all of us should come to repentance. That's what you want. You want all to come to repentance and change their mind. Look to you and say, God, I'm a, I'm a wretched, undone human being. But God, you're a faithful creator who can take anything, take dirt and whip the devil. In Jesus' name, it is finished. We're not fighting for victory, y'all. We're fighting from victory. In Jesus' name, be blessed.